Japan, a vibrant and exotic country, teeming with 130 million people, one of the world's most dynamic places. Rich in both culture and technology, Japan inspires unique trends amongst its populace, trends that explode beyond the confines of its borders. From architecture to cars, Japan has a history of doing things differently, with their desire to bring the future to the present. In 1953, one such organization was born. What began as a small import-export company, Taito would eventually grow to become an arcade powerhouse worldwide. It was Taito's decision to begin creating their own games that would impact the entertainment industry, putting video games in the spotlight and launching a cultural phenomenon. 1978, Tomohiro Nishikado, a designer at Taito, single-handedly created Space Invaders. From the music, the graphics, even the microcomputer that powered the game, his technology would begin an entertainment revolution. Video games had arrived. I mean, at that time, Space Invaders was like it. It was huge. It was it was like a national craze. You know, we'd have these like tiny like coffee houses that have been converted into arcades. You could just hear that you know that iconic like Space Invaders music, just walking down the street everywhere. Uh, men, women, kids, every everyone was playing it. And so I think that I don't know. I just I just think that 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 time period is very very interesting because. Uh, you have the entire nation just focused on video games, in particular, you know, Space Invaders. The game was in such high demand that arcades made up of only Space Invader cabinets became popular. These are famously known as Invader Houses. Game Center is a invader, a lot of games, a lot of games are 50 or 100 years old, but the customers are インベーダーしかやりたくないって言ってくるんで、もう面倒くさいからこのストア自体インベーダーだけにしちゃおうと言われたのがインベーダーハウスね。これも画期的なこと。そうするとそのインベーダーがワンコイン100円ですから、100円
will discover an array of games to enjoy, and can even select their favorite titles from a selection of classic arcade PCBs. <laughs> Game in Ebisen isn't your typical Japanese arcade. It caters to your unique demographic of top players who strive to set new high scores and record their best efforts on Superplay DVDs. ハードコアゲームは、スコアネームはクローバー while the base concepts of these games remain unchanged, the skill level required to play them has become daunting. Oh, it's just, I mean, you know, if you've played the, if you haven't played the games, it just looks it almost looks it looks easy. I mean, no matter what it is, because but if you if you know the game and you know how you know controller breaking frustration is induced in these things sometimes when you watch them do it, I mean you're just like, oh wow. And at you know, at times you're like, oh that's oh that's how you did it. And then other times you're just like, well I might as well give up. There's no way I'm gonna do that. <laughs> The countless hours players like Clover TAC spend learning these games makes the most difficult look easy. But when you're chasing that next high score, nerves begin to play a part. So, the pressure is great, but but the game it is the mindset of these players that make them unique. They are not competing head to head. It is all about challenging yourself and besting your personal goals. その、Arcades are like a second home to many of these high score holders. But it costs more than a few hundred yen to become a top player. The real price is dedication. You know, these guys are, you know, they're unbelievable. They if they asked him how much point blank did you spend? It was uh, Mushihime Samaputari, which is the ultra mode, you know, it's just it's unbelievable. Most people can't get past the first stage, and he clears the whole thing. They asked him point blank, how much did you spend? And he said the first month about 150,000 yen. And I'm not sure if, if that was single, if that was standard credits of 100 yen, that's, that's 1,500 credits in a month. So these guys, you know, obviously, they're, they've kind of taken the hobby to an extreme. It's probably gone a little beyond hobby. Arcade gaming can certainly lead to some degree of fame. And in certain circles, many of these names are synonymous with greatness. あ、クロバティエシーがエビセンに初めて来た時、うん。ナル君っていう、ま、やっぱりトッププレイヤーのシューティングすごい上手いトッププレイヤーの子がいるんですけど、その人が連れてきてくれたの。もう最初からすっご
It is under Ebi Hara's watchful eye that world records are set and broken. The walls are lined with the current high scores of its resident players, and 20-year-old notebooks show the history and evolution of these scores. Arcadia Magazine, a monthly publication which focuses on arcade culture, documents the high scores from all over Japan. So, this is the first time I was in 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 the first time 一番最近は、えー、とあの赤い刀っていうゲーム確か4億3000万ぐらいのスコアだったと思います。The thing that's really interesting about shooting games as they evolve is that in many ways they became almost less about shooting and more about dodging. And so I think that when you go back and you play、um, you know, Space Invaders,、um, it's very different from the shooting games that are being made now. You can see there's a connection, there's an arc, there's an evolution, but they're different, you know, and they've changed.、Um, uh, you know, the, the guy who, who created Space Invaders like, told me, he's like, like, I can't even play like, shooting games now. He's like, they're just, it's, it's unnerving. In the 90s, you, you started seeing、uh, kind of more and more e- extreme shooting games,、uh, where in Japanese they're called、uh, Danmaku shooters, you know, shooting games, right? And that means just like a, like a hail. Of, of bullets, and, and that's what they were. I mean, where you, you, it, it became like how many projectiles they could get on this, the screen at one time. As more and more games rode the success of Space Invaders, designers needed to find ways to entice new players to drop their 100 yen coins. As game design evolved, arcade companies became aware of certain criteria that seemed to be working. Game Center on Game Room, Cast, Guy Hakuen, the Euro. 形で遊ばせてあげてそれで利益を上げるとでユーザーは100円払って遊ぶというなので一種の時間貸し時間何分間をそのお金で遊ばせてあげますよという考え方があるんですねなので基本的には一つのゲームは30分前後で終わることっていうのをまず考えてますともう一つが100円を出した人が、えー、簡単に言うと3分でも1分でもいいんですけどそれで満足するっていう作り方をしたいつまり RPG のような伏線を張ってストーリーを楽しんでもう最後のボス行くまでにいろんなイベントがあってというような作り方は NG ダメなんですね最初100勝の100円を入れて最初の3分間ぐらいを考えてそれ3分間ぐらいですけど3分間でもうこれだけ遊べますよっていうことをいきなり示さないといけないだからいきなりクライマックスっていうような感じでゲームを作ってるでだけどもう一つが100円を入れた人が全部遊んでしまってああもういいやもうやらないって言われたら終わってしまうのでまたやりたいと思わせるようにクライマックスを遊んでるんだけどそのクライマックスを遊んだだけでは全部遊び尽くしてなくてまだあるよまだそこがあるよというような形のゲームの作り方をしなきゃいけないっていうなんですねだからそういう考え方でゲームを作る With these ideas in mind arcade games would continue to coax the 100 yen coins from casual and hardcore gamers alike The idea that, that, that people walk into an arcade and they're Paying a machine money, you know, and they are doing everything that they can to not die so they don't lose their money. I think it's very, very profound. And it's becoming increasingly profound in an age where, you know, you buy a video game and it's eight, nine, ten hours long and you play it. Maybe you don't finish it, who cares? Then you diddle around on the multiplayer and you're happy. This is different, you know, this is very, very different where it's like you have this coin. And you, you, know, you want to win and you want to keep playing. You don't want to die.、They're, the stakes are higher, much higher. It became harder and harder to attract clients to the same gimmick. Shooting games would soon take a back seat as arcade gaming needed its next big change. えーとね、これまでのゲームっていうのはお商売でいうと,、えー、とこれはとっても面白いので100円取って返さないけど3分間遊ばせてあげますよっていうそういう仕組みだったでもストツーはこれが根底から実は違っていてあ,のあなたと隣のあなたが一種の100円かけて戦ってくださいもう負けたらもう100円取られますけど悔しいよなさあもっとお金あげてっていうこんな仕組みはこれまでになかったのでもちろんやったら面白かったしあとねお金の流れも全く違っちゃった
だから「ストリートファイター2」を見てみるとあのね歴史の時間でねあの大絶滅ってあるでしょある時を境にアンモナイとか全く出なくなるとか恐竜がなくなるとかあんな感じで「ストリートファイター2」っていうのはそれまでの僕らが大好きだったシューティングとかの,あのアーケードゲームをちょっと絶滅させだったそれぐらいのパラダイムシフトだったと思います。And so began the era of fighting games. Instead of battling the computer's AI, players were pitted head to head against each other, creating a new dynamic, which revitalized arcades in a big way. This social atmosphere of fighting games would breed a new type of community within the arcades. The joy of winning and frustration of losing is amplified ten times when competing against a human opponent. Daigo Umehara is among the world's elite fighting game players and has made a career. Out of dominating his opponents. 趣味ゲームずっとゲームだったんですけど今は趣味と呼べるかどうかわからないですけど初めてゲームをプレイしたところは、えー、レンタルビデオショップだったんだけどそこには、えー、姉と一緒にビデオを借りに行ってその時に初めてアーケードゲームを見てそれがきっかけです。14歳から22歳ぐらいまではもうものすごく一生懸命やってて23歳から27歳ぐらいまであまりゲームやってなかったで「ストリートファイター4」が出てまたたくさんゲームをやるようになりました From these humble beginnings in video rental stores Daigo would become one of If not the most accomplished arcade gamer in the world. やっぱ一番その 2D の中では一番上なのはやはり梅原選手やっぱ戦略も残してるしまたあの各世界大会の方もやっぱなんて言ったらいいんですかねこう歴戦とかやっぱ戦績をきちんと残してる上でやっぱ認められてる上でのやっぱ選手だと思いますけど 2D ではやっぱり梅原選手ですね。What is it about this type of competition that attracts so many gamers? And what makes a top fighting game player? まあやっぱり人と人とのなんかコミュニケーション的なとこだと思いますあの相手がそのコンピューターじゃないんでそこら辺が面白い部分かなとうんいや自分ではよくわからないんですけどただその子供の頃からちょっと理解力はある方かなとは思ってたのでそれがゲームに生きてるのかもしれませんねあまりもう元々あったわけではないと思います<笑>やっぱゲームをやってってゲームを理解してってまあそ,それで多分こういうスキルが身についたんじゃないかなっていうふうに思います We see a common thread between professionals of both shooting and fighting games To dominate the field there is a significant cost 1ヶ月その若い頃10代の頃は一月に6万円ぐらい多分ゲームにお金使ってました一番やってる頃は1週間全部<笑>えー、子供の頃はもうすごい緊張してましたねもう緊張で手がこう震えちゃってなかなかうまく操作できなかったりでも10代半ば17歳かそれぐらいになったらかなり大きな大会でもしっかり動けるようになってきましたね今はもう大会でもあんまり緊張しない。You can't be at the top of the leaderboard this long without garnering a reputation. Some would call it fame, others, infamy. I guess you know that everybody knows him as the beast, and that's exactly what he is. I see that he invested in a pair of headphones now while he's playing, so he's probably just listening to his own voice telling himself, I am the beast. I am the beast. Like over and over again. So, this is a good thing. ゲームしてる時の顔を見て怖いなって思う時がありますねなんでですかねんなんで
無表情なんだろうな子供の頃から結構顔に出さないいろんなこと顔に出さない子供だったからそれでゲームもプレイ中はあんまり表情がないのかもしれない。Uh, he's, he's amazing. He's definitely probably the best Street Fighter player of all time. Umehara Kun wa tokuni, game ga umai to you yori mo, game o ubaku shiyo to suru, doryoku suru koto ga umai, yepa. So you t o k o n saga, Mago Kun ya Umehara Kun wa yaka sugoi na, hango shima. Kunai kaz de umaku naru no de areba, game center de renshu shita hoa, ito mo imas. それはなぜならばやはりゲームセンターはそのワンプレイするのにお金を払わなきゃいけないのでその,そ,のそのプレイについて結構考えると思うんですよなのでそのまあ家庭用ゲームとかだと一回負けても別にいいかっていうふうに思うんですけどでもゲームセンターだとそういうのがちょっとちょっと薄れるのでまあ結構真剣にやるんじゃないかなっていう部分で。This arcade community isn't made up of just teenagers. Men and women of all ages spend hours enjoying their favorite games. There's everyone's there. Like there are people in like little kids. There there are like people in like business outfits. They just came from work. Old people from like age range is probably from 18 to probably like 45. And they're all really good at fighting games. They all practice really hard and they want to be the best. Pride is very important in Japan. So that's why their community is so strong because they always want to be number one. And there's like different machines where, okay, like there's probably like four machines here and four machines right here for Street Fighter. And then the first four are like top players' machines. And the other four is like for mediocre players. So people got to work up their levels to. Make sure they can play in the first four machines because that's where all the top dogs play. So that's like, it's really unique how there's like a, a system like that because everyone here, they, they just want to play everyone and like, oh, that's fun games. But in Japan, it's like, it's not fun. It's our life to be the best. In Japan, it's not fun. It's our life to be the best. In Japan, it's not fun. It's our life to be the best. In Japan, it's not fun. It's our life to be the best. In Japan, it's not fun. It's our life to be the best. In Japan, it's not fun. It's our life to be the best. In Japan, it's not fun. It's our life to be the best. ゲームセンター日本のゲームセンターは本当にうるさいですいい意味でうるさいですね僕の周りの人たちはもちろんゲームが好きなんだけどほとんどの人はあの友達に会いに来てるいつも行くゲームセンターに行けばあの友達に会えるからそれが目的でゲームセンターに行く人たちが日本では多いですねそれが海外のゲームセンターとはちょっと違うかもしれない私はそのゲームセンターで働いていてまあ、その時にゲームセンターの友達っていうのがまあすぐゲームやっぱり一ゲームをする人ってな,まあなかなかそのゲームセンター同士でしょっちゅう顔を合わせますので仲良くなるんですけれどもその人を通じて今結婚しましたはい。The social aspect of Japanese arcades is what keeps them going whereas in America that social foundation has become relegated To basements and niche gaming tournaments. It's weird because there's people who are probably going to be watching this that don't even know really what the arcade scene was like, you know, and I don't even know how to begin to describe it to them because all they know is the internet and online. And I mean, online stuff can be fun, you know, I, I, we all do it, I guess, you know, so we know it's good stuff. But missing that interaction of actually meeting up in the arcade. And being next to the person who you don't know but you just want to beat them and smash on them, it's an experience. Like, you don't get that online and you can't get that online. The social aspect is probably 80% of it, I would say. You know, in the beginning it wasn't, you know, but it's like once you've already been playing a lot and you kind of know where you stand, then it all becomes pretty much the social aspect. And then it's like, oh yeah, I forgot, I have to play in top eight now. You know, it's like I, for I totally forgot about that. I was having fun just chilling in the back, talking to everybody, joking and having fun. And then the tournament's just like the side part of it. I saw the game center, the fighting game, the corner of the field, was really there were different conditions. For example, if you meet with friends, you meet with a communication room, a communication room, and then you meet with a strong person, 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 
ていける場っていうのはいろいろとあると思うんですけれどもやっぱ一番分かりやすく言うんであればやっぱお祭りが好きまたはあの一つのコミュニケーションでやっぱ友達を作るまたそこでやっぱ戦友って言ったらいいんですかねやっぱゲーム作る友達としてやっぱ戦友を作る場のコミュニケーションとしてやっぱそういう雰囲気が感じられるかなって思いますちょっとマニアックな雰囲気があるかもしれないですその UFO キャッチャーとか簡単にできるそのゲームだとそうでもないのかもしれないんですけど格闘ゲームはちょっと難しいところも奥が深いというかところもあるんでちょっとマニアックな雰囲気があると思います。Grow, ファイリンゲームはアーケードに関わっていると思います。ファイリンゲームは世界的に大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな大きな広です主にあのアーケードゲームの方の音楽だったり効果音だったりの制作をしてます作品的には、えー、かれこれ20年ぐらい前のですね「えー、ハングオン」とか「アウトラン」とか、えー「アフターバーナー」だったり「スペースハリアー」などなどそこにある体感ゲームと言われたこうゲームをするとこう動くようなゲームですねそういうやつの音楽を作ってました新しい一ジャンルを築いたゲームだと思いますね、今にあったようなこう格闘とかドライブゲームとかそういうのとまたか、えー、別のベクトルを持ったゲームだと思いますでその音楽をメインにしてそれをたのそれをもとに、えー、お客さんに楽しませるっていうのはまあとてもた、うん、斬新な試みで面白いと思います。These music or rhythm games would reignite people's passion for arcade gaming. And appeal to the next generation of up and coming gamers. 本名は森友由と言います、えー、ゲームの名前だと「悪大感」っていう名前で、えー、と今やってるのは DDR あと最近「フォースライダーズ」っていうのをアーケードではそれをやってますね連れ,て連れられてその千葉の方のゲー,ムセンゲーセンに行ったんだけどその時にまだ DDR ほとんど全然知らなくてビートマニアあの5軒の方のビートマニアがあったのを覚えてますそれでちょっとやり始めてなんかおもしあこれ結構面白いななんて言ってた頃に別の知り合いの子から「いやそれよりもっと面白いのがあるの?」って言って連れてかれたのがその DDR であなんか指でやるより足でこうやる方があ俺いいかもしんないとか言って。You know, like on player pianos, when they have the, the, the score rolling up, music games are like the video game equivalent of that. Whereas instead of like, the score being produced by a machine, you know, piano, you are responsible for sequencing those notes. And as the music genre grew, its audience became more and more prolific. Commanding larger sections of the arcade devoted to these games. When DDR started to expand in popularity in the late 90s, particularly 98 and early 99,、uh, there were machines everywhere. I mean, in the rural regions, in Tokyo, just everywhere. Even in places that should not have any business owning an arcade machine had one. And I remember the one that stuck out the most was a coin laundry in the city of Matsumoto down in Nagano Ken. That actually had one there. And I thought, what's the relationship? You wait and you dance while your laundry dries or washes or whatever. It's, it was a very bizarre thing to see. But it was still getting traffic as well. People were going there to play DDR. I thought that was really bizarre. The first game that I played was the game show. In the first game, the first game was the game show. In the first game, the first game was the game show. Once Dance Dance Revolution became available for home console, the future of arcades looked grim. If this unique experience can be replicated in the comfort of your own home, why bother going to an arcade? Now, PlayStation and Xbox are Dance Dance Revolution. やっぱり日本の住宅を考えるとあまりそのドタバタ動いたりとかあまりその人を呼んでワイワイやったりっていうのがすごくやりにくいので家でやるときとゲームセンターでやるときっていうのは全然違ってやっぱり人前でやったりしたいときはゲームセンターに行きます
当時そのやっぱりダンスダンスレボリューションを同じゲームセンターでやる仲間っていうのはやっぱり同じところにいる関係上すぐ仲良くなっちゃうっていうのがありましてそれでいっぱい友達ができたりしてあの地域ごとになんかいろんな組というかそういうコミュニティが出来上がっていて楽しかったです。The popularity of rhythm games in Japan would foster the growth of a skilled community of players who would quickly master the intricacies of the genre. あのー、何でもそうなんですけど、あのーまあ、日本語で難しい言葉で攻略法っていうのがあるのであの例えば矢印一つにしてもマーベラスをどうそれ一個一個どういうふうに踏めばいいか曲によっては全部の矢印が同じタイミングで踏めるものではない場合もあるのでたまにあのフェイントで一個だけそのあのマ,ーベマーベラスの場所がポイントが違うとかっていうのがあったりとかたまにそういうのがあるのでそういうのも含めて全部あの攻略をしていくしていけるかどうかですよねあとはもう本当にやり込んで自分の,自分の体をそれに合わせて作っていくっていうところなんでしょうね。The physical interaction that these games demand is a unique feature which attracts players for fitness reasons as much as for gameplay. 少なくとも俺はあの DDR っていうのはスキーとかバドミントンと同じ一生やろうと思えば一生できるスポーツであるというふうに思うんで,でアメリカでもねあの肥満対策であの DDR 学校とかで取り立たされてるのもあるしで年44ですけどそれより年齢上の人50代の人も知ってますで今全国でも知られてる人で有名なご夫婦でだご主人が確か70超えてる。方もいらご夫婦もいらっしゃってその方たちはあの健康のために毎日少しずつっていうやっぱり足を動かして体を動かしてっていう形なのである種スポーツとしてはあの結構健康のためっていうのはいいんじゃないかなと思って While it may look easy as with shooting games and fighting games countless hours are spent perfecting these skills rhythm games at their highest level are a serious business In terms of the easiest settings you may have Oh, 50 steps, maybe even less than that on the easier songs because it's basically one step every few beats or so to speak. I mean, even somebody who's not familiar with the game can keep up. Oh, look, there's a single arrow. I wonder what's happening then. Oh, I get it now. But if you put that up to the extreme settings, I mean, the highest level difficulty, you're bordering on 700 steps in the span of a minute and a half, two minutes. And that's just crazy. I mean, to the casual person watching, they have no idea what's going on. It's just a huge blur. And it's not just with DDR as well. I mean, with the other music games, It's the same thing. I mean, you may have a series of columns coming down the screen or other icons, and you get them dense enough, nobody can read what's going on except somebody who's practiced it at such a level that they know what to expect. It's amusing for me personally to be able to do these things now that years ago, just watching them would m a k e go, wow, how did he do that? I mean, to be able to do that or perform at the same level is a very nice feeling. I mean, and to this day, even with、uh, over at this time 1,200、uh, perfect scores over the DDR mixes, sub, single, double, all different uh, modes, uh, it's still nice to be able to get a full perfect combo or whatever. Just see that little flash, the flare at the end, look that. It's a cheap thrill to see that. I still get a kick out of that to this day, even on something that's not necessarily that difficult. You know, for foreigners, I'm sure Aaron's probably the best. So it just, it's kind of like you see the big names and you see the big names at your local arcade. And, you know, you see, you know, if you see somebody at your local arcade that has, you know, a top ranking, then that's kind of、uh, you know, impressive. Impressive to say the least. Aaron has helped create an online community for these games, sharing news and high scores from Japan via a popular web forum dedicated to rhythm games. Aaron and his close friends. Have been invited to travel to compete and showcase their abilities internationally. See his name on the high score when he starts a song, you know he's got to be pretty good. I mean, it's not easy to rank in the machines. Part of the reason that I can get perfect scores is that I zone out. I mean, you lose yourself in the music, you focus on the beat, you focus on the patterns coming,、uh, you try not to worry about distractions or your score or anything along that nature. Just keep it going because a great at the beginning of the song is the same as a great at the end of the song. It'll destroy your,、uh, com- your full perfect combo at the time. With the very first mixes of the music games, were, I wouldn't say difficult at all, at least not in comparison to today's <laughs> standards. So, what was difficult back then is, well, a cakewalk in comparison today, partially because at the time nobody was used to the music genre. This was all new. I mean, just doing anything was a challenge. 
so once everybody got used to that, uh, you had to ramp up the difficulty, so to speak. So at the time, there was a novelty to the music game genre. It was fun because those challenges were there because it was a unique experience. Whereas nowadays, the challenge is there because people already know the basics. They just want to push themselves to new limits. The Japanese have been pushing the limits of gaming for the last 40 years. But at the end of the day, it's the social climate, the community, that keeps people coming back to arcades. やっぱりそのスコアを頑張る目的としてはやっぱりいろんな人と戦っていいショーをするることでいろんなライバルとか仲間を増やしていきたいっていうのがありますね実際スコアをいっぱいやってきたおかげで日本全国のいろんな友達
arcades had become scarce. I, I guess like one of the things living in Japan that, you, that if you like video games you notice very quickly is that they still have arcades. And you know, growing up in Texas, I went to you know my lo local arcade a lot. But by the time that I was a, a teenager and um, you know was going to college, those arcades started to disappear. Um, so I think that that kind of nostalgia, that that, that feeling that you know that that this is something I used to do, you know, when I was a kid, and it doesn't exist anymore, but it still exists in Japan. And you can you know uh, walk down the street and you can find a find a great arcade and play a bunch of games. While it remains difficult to find an arcade in North America, in Japan, they're hard to ignore. Gaming is part of their everyday life. It's part of their culture. The companies that make arcade games are Japanese. So there's that, it kind of exists. And granted, you had that in America as well. You had, you know, American companies making arcade games, but then a lot of the, uh, I guess, American game development moved more and more towards PC. Um, so you kind of have that really strong backbone in, in Japan. The other thing is that you have the location. Like, you know, Sega not only makes arcade games, they own arcades, you know. A lot of arcade uh, dev developers that, you know, are like that. So you, you have this kind of, uh, I guess, system already in place. Another reason is that, you know, you have population density. That in the sense that if you get off at a train station, you can probably walk to an arcade. In the U.S., you'd have to get in a car and drive usually, unless you lived in, for example, New York City or someplace like that. Um, but generally, you'd have to drive. And so why drive somewhere when you can play a video game at home? Kind of, you know, I guess that kind of situation really hurt arcades in the U.S. So while there is clearly something to be said for the location and access, this isn't the sole reason for arcades failing in the Western world. Some would say that the arcades simply didn't grow up. Some arcades have not really like adapted and evolved and changed. You know, it's still pretty much like put a quarter in to play. And I, I mean, you know, it's kind of like a very old business model, you know, not playing games at a public place. That's not, that's obviously something that like, you know, is going to continue in the future. But the actual idea of putting a physical coin into a machine to play until you die is kind of like an idea that somebody came up with, what, like 30, 40 years ago now. <laughs> You know, like, that's part of why they're dying. <laughs> in Japan, gaming is accepted. And I think in the States, it's accepted as simply a time-wasting hobby. And I think it's anything but that. Arcades didn't necessarily die, they just didn't grow up. You know, they were always focusing on basically teenagers. And when you focus on the youth of America, you better have a positive influence. Otherwise, Uncle Sam is coming for you. The US government is like, arcades are bad. They make our little kids do drugs and kill people. You have movies like Saw. You don't think a person would do that when they see Saw, and, but you think, oh, someone punching in the face with Ryu can make someone kill someone. That's kind of dumb. The US government does not like arcades, and that's why arcade scenes are, so di are dying, and it's so hard for arcades to open up a license here because the government is so strict. There's just this stigma that I'm hoping that we can eradicate and showing the popularity of video games. So while Americans fight strict regulations and societal pressure, in Japan, game companies flourish with free reign to innovate and design meaningful games for all audiences. I think games mean more to more people in Japan than they do in America. Um, I think games in Japan early on, they were made to appeal to many people. Uh, for example, Pac-Man designer, Toru Iwatani, he intentionally made Pac-Man not a game about shooting aliens or not a game about playing tennis, more about uh, just this kind of wacky, cool, uh, stylized character who goes around eating things, which I think uh, I've heard that he made that specifically to appeal to more uh, to women, actually, uh, when uh, traditionally most of the arcade games were famously, you know, alien shooters. We even have a game geared towards, uh, you know, like 50-year-old uh, housewives, basically, who like uh, Korean idols. You know, they have a special pachinko game themed with uh, Yon-sama. 
which uh, I think you won't get in America anytime soon. Instead, American arcades were forced to shift gears, becoming quote unquote family friendly locations in an attempt to reach a larger audience. In the 80s, it was that stigma of the arcades being a negative place to go to that arcade owners changed their, their whole perspective. Like, well, we don't want to be thought of like as D&D was back in the early 80s, as some kind of negative influence on kids. We want a, a happy family type of place. So you have like the Dave & Busters who cater to adults. You have a family fun center to cater to the whole family. Or like the, the, the golf lands in California. I think it was just to bring in more people and to say like, well, the video games, they're not bad. These are places where everyone can enjoy them. And then that's really, we saw that shift to that kind of model. I would say the arcade is not relevant, really, to the, the family of today in America. Like, we had these grimy arcades, and then, you know, Chuck E. Cheese started taking over, or, you know, sort of uh, eating up these smaller mom-and-pop places. And, you know, some of the experience is lost in, in those kind of places, in my, in my humble opinion. The layout and design of arcades in Japan is another potential reason for their continued success. Multiple floors divide up game types, ensuring the best experience possible for a wide array of players. When I first walk into an arcade, I usually will not see the music games there per se. I'll usually see the UFO catchers first before I see anything. And then around there, I'll see fighting and racing games off to the side, the horse race simulators, the Mahjong games, all the other uh, bizarre ones off to a side, along with the uh, bingo machines and the metal games, all of those. Uh, music games tend to be in a corner or in some, I wouldn't say isolated, but some setback place of the arcade. Uh, not because the staff necessarily wants to hide them, but because they are very loud, let's be honest, they're blaring music at you. And uh, it can be distracting to other players, especially when you have a number of these machines uh, blaring out in the arcades. ゲーム With nothing left to chance, it is apparent that the design of these arcades are thought out to the very last detail. Ultimately, it is about creating a space that caters to their clientele。もうサービスじゃなくてたまらない。the staff are so orderly and it's almost like you're in a casino. They, they have like proper attire, you know, like a suit tie or a waistcoat and stuff. They look really smart and they're very um, attentive and they're actually really good at the games. They're not just people walking around cleaning machines. These guys are really top players. Like they can do all the really good combos and stuff like that. I never forget a time when I was there for Virtual Fighter in 1998. And uh, one of the buttons went out on Virtual Fighter. So I asked the guy if he could repair it. And this guy sits down, repairs the button, puts a credit in, and proceeds to like completely batter the opponent by doing all these really stylish combos. And, he's, and he gets up and he's like, yeah, the button's working now. Just when I saw that, I was really impressed with how they actually make effort to employ people genuinely um, interested in games. And it's not just someone trying to make a quick buck doing any job. And I like that. Much like casinos, Japan's arcades are designed to draw you in and keep you entertained. The hardest part is attracting the mass foot traffic into your establishment. Fortunately, Japan's arcades are built around that very goal. 
入り口の近くは UFO キャッチャーそれが一番お客さんがいっぱいいるから UFO キャッチャーは入り口のそばにいっぱいあってあと音ゲービートマニアとか太鼓の達人とかまあそういうゲームセンターにあまり来ない人たちでも楽しめるようなゲームは入り口のそばに置いてありますね。それで地下は、えー、大型のゲーム競馬ゲームだったりサッカーゲームだったり、まあ、地下にあることが多いですで上に上がっていくにつれてメダルゲームだったりで大体最上階がビデオゲームですねだから多分ゲームが好き,で好きな人ほど上の階に行くっていう感じですあまりゲームを普段しない人たちは1階ゲームが好きな人につれてどんどんどんどん上に行くっていうのはゲームセンターの作りになってます Even in Japan, we see a shift in business models, with places like Round One becoming major players in the arcade industry. Instead of a traditional arcade, at Round One, you pay by the hour, and you also have access to activities like billiards, bowling, volleyball courts, or batting cages.、Uh, round One, for example, is open until、uh, 5 a.m.、Uh, it's accessible by walking or by train.、Uh, they have、um, alcohol there. Uh, they have food there.、Uh, you don't really have to leave <laughs> anytime soon. So、uh, I think、uh, for me, why、uh, Round One can exist is because it's so accessible. I'll go to an arcade because it's in downtown area. So, you know, you go drinking, and then after that, you go to Round One to sing karaoke, and then you just play some arcade games or something.、Uh, Or, for example,、uh, you go watch a movie, and then they have this giant amusement center right next to the movie theater, so you can go, you know, waste, not waste,、uh, spend a good productive two hours, you know, playing whatever you want. Round one, some kind of thing, and I'm sure I'm going to be able to do it. 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 普通のお客様またはまあご年配の方も気軽に遊べるようなやっぱ娯楽施設を作るように努力していければいいかなっていうふうに思います。So while arcades look for a way to stay relevant, consoles continue to improve, and the home gaming market continues to grow. で家庭用のゲームがすごく今出来がいいというか優秀なんで、うんそのゲームセンターがこれから増え増えたり流行ったりするのはすごく大変。な時代だろうなと思いますけどだからやっぱり皆さんおっしゃってますけども Wii が出てからゲーセンって意味なくなったよねってその通りだと思いますあのみんな例えば友達集まったら Wii でボーリングとかやってるからねだから一番最初の意味でのあのゲームセンターっていうのはちょっともう単純に負けてると思いますでもあの今ゲーセン行かれたらわかると思うんですけどもほとんど1階のプリクラと2階のカードゲームで回ってるんですねあの Wii が来た時に実はこれでアーケードが終わりだなってこう商売的には思ったんですけどもあの内容的にはあんまりうんまあでも実際もうそれとは違うところにゲームセンターもなってしまってるしっていうのがあの大きいと思います。It's fair to say that Japan's arcades rely on things like crane games and p u r i k u r a to carry their business year to year. This maintains profitability while waiting for the next big game to arrive. It's the small retro arcades. That struggle to maintain a large enough customer base with the influx of consoles. まあ正直そのここのエビセンさんみたいなそういう個人経営個人経営でそのビデオゲーム中心っていうところはまあちょっと厳しい状況かなというのが正直なところですね。それはそのまあよく言われることですけどその家庭用ゲームのその性能が上がってきてもう。昔はその逆だったんですけどアーケードじゃなきゃできないゲームっていうのがいっぱいあったけど今ではもうむしろ家庭用ゲームの方がその性能がいいからもうゲームセンターに行く理由がないとかそういうところもありますしあとはそのえっ、ー、とまあマージャンファイトクラブとかそういう人気のある大型のゲームっていうのはやっぱりちょっと値段が高くてそういう個人のところが入れるにはまあちょっと厳しいと。他の国に比べればゲーームセンターの数は多いけどでも10年前に比べるとやっぱりすごい数が減ってますねでやっぱり UFO キャッチャーとかオトゲームとかそういうのばっかりになっちゃうんじゃないかなと何かゲームセンターでしかできないような工夫が
ないと格闘ゲームとかそういうゲームはなくなっちゃうんじゃないかなと思いますね今後どうなるかっていうと全く予測ができないやっぱりあのコンソールのゲームがすごい充実してくるとコンソールにないものをやっぱしみんな求めてアーケードに来るので、まあ、一つはコミュニケーションなんだろうけどもあのやっぱし新技術新しいものを求めてくると思うんで新しい技術だからね想像はつかないもしそういうものが出たらまたアーケードの人がたくさん来るだろうしそういうものがなかったらまあちょっとずつ人は減っていくんじゃないかなと思う While the future is uncertain, there remains a unique appeal to arcades that is hard to argue. There's something to be said about walking into a game center, sitting down at a cabinet, knowing on the other side there's a real person. And that takes a certain degree of, I don't know,、um, bravery. Because you might get your ass handed to you. You may destroy the other person. It's that kind of uncertainty. And,、um, You know, if you're playing online, you start getting your butt kicked, you can just rage quit, turn off the machine. You can't do that in an arcade. 今のゲームセンター、本正直やっぱ厳しいっていうのはあるんですけれども、でただ、厳しいからって言って、そこで諦めるんじゃなくて、じゃあ、お客さんを取り込む、またはこう顧客を作るためにはどうやったらいいかっていうふうで、やっぱ毎日考えながらやってますね。It doesn't have to just be 400 machines all stuffed together. And a bunch of people crammed in one area, open it up, just make it more accessible to not just the hardcore gamer, but the general community as a whole. Japan already has that. They have that in their culture. My name is Christopher Laporte. I am a Las Vegas local for about six years now. We are opening up the Insert Coins Video Lounge Game Bar. I basically spent about a year trying to get the capital to make this happen. And everyone I talked to thought I was. Basically, out of my mind. I said I once opened up a bar with video games in it and arcade cabinets, and people looked at me and they go, Why would you do that? You know, games are for kids. The fear was arcades died. So, why would you try to resuscitate that business model? The arcade business model isn't perfect. In fact, we have seen several arcades close in Japan in recent years. But for every arcade that closes, Two new ones open up. You know, a lot of the news of arcade closures in Japan has been from these mom and pop arcades because you never hear about a Taito station closing or, you know,、uh, a Club Sega closing. You hear about them opening new stores. Like, they just opened a third Sega in Akihabara right next to the train station. Video game and card game are docking with the card game. No category is going to be. 新しいカテゴリーが生まれることが相乗効果によって一番トップの売り上げを作れたんだと思う。New game types always cause a mini resurgence in arcade popularity. And the goal of arcade companies in Japan is to continually evolve their offerings, drawing in new and larger audiences with modern gaming experiences. 数字あのレベニュー的なゴールはいくらでもあるんですけど、多分それはあんまり面白くないと思う。それよりはあのアーケードゲームのこう楽しみたいな遊びたいなっていう人をやっぱり増やしていかなきゃいけないのがうちの会社の、えー、最終ゴールだと思ってますですからゲームの不安を徹底的に増やしていくそういうことに全力で頑張りたいと思います日本の今、えー、日本のアニメとか漫画は結構海外にこう流出してるんですがアーケードゲームもまだ流出してないけれどもそれほど。それと匹敵するほど面白い文化だと思うのでぜひこの一度来てですねこの濃いあのアニメの世界に負けない濃い世界をこう味わってもらえたらいいんじゃないかと思います家で一人でゲームやるというのとは違う、えー、そこで世界が垣間見れますぜひいらしてくださいゲーミングは、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、カジュアル、
and it's just a different version of it, but it still entails the same thing. It's a place to play video games, have fun with your friends. I think the Japanese might get some inspiration from us in the way we have our console gaming. You know, the way we have the presentation of gaming in terms of an adult entertainment with drinking and, you know, cocktail servers and just upping the ante of what an arcade should be. It's that culture that we're tapping into. So, I think it's viable anywhere as long as you have 30-somethings. You know, we were raised on it. I can't stress it enough. It was taboo maybe 30 years ago, but it sure as hell isn't now. And I'm just proud to be part of it. You know, we can make the arcade scene totally return to form of what they used to be in terms of popularity, but even bigger. You just, you have to come and see it to believe it. The Americans are, they're back. And we'll get you at Evo too, Japanese. <laughs> You're going down, Daigo. <laughs> so we are at Evo 2011, the World Finals, and uh, it's just an amazing gathering of players from, uh, I believe the count is 46 countries here this year. Uh, obviously players from everywhere in North America, all over Asia, Europe, South America. Uh, it's really the, the world's fighting elite and their fans and their competitors, next generation of fighting elite, are all here in this room. Uh, we started about 14 years ago in an arcade with 64 people. And we ran a Super Street Fighter 2 tournament and it just snowballed over the years and bigger and bigger. And when Street Fighter 4 hit, thousands of people and then now it's just out of control. So we took Togeki and what they did with arcades, we merged it with our stuff with console, and now we got a huge event, and I, I think we got the best of both worlds. Evo is the most important thing to do with it. It's the most important thing to win, and the most important thing to win, and the most fun event. I think the secret's out. Evo is like the place to be every year. It's a world championship, so they want to be the world champion. They're going to keep sending more and more players to take out our players, so. It's pretty scary, like when our U.S. players can't even compete anymore. Uh, yeah, we've seen a massive Japanese presence here. Uh, we have a great connection with all the international players. We really respect what they do. Um, but we see a lot of these guys ending up at the top of the tournaments, and it's no special magical Japanese ability. It's they're coming from really one of the ultimate crucibles of fighting game competition. For a 1,600-man tournament, if you come with like you know maybe I think there were like 12 or something. To have from 12 guys, you know, a third of you make it all the way, that, that's very impressive. It shows more, I guess, international rivalry because obviously if you come to America, uh, the Americans probably want to beat the Japanese players mainly, so we're doing pretty good here and there, but the Japanese presence is definitely overwhelming this year. And their dedication to the game, obviously in particular, uh, Daigo Umahara, who's been, uh, become a sponsored player and treats it very much like a job. He spends his time in the arcade, he does physical fitness routines just to stay in mental and physical shape and has just a unique focus and he's able to bring a real focus and ability. Uh, he really has followed a dream and said, this is what I'm good at in life. I'm gonna find a way to make this work. And with the support of uh, you know, his sponsor, he's been able to make that happen. And you see the results speak for themselves. He's right at the top of the winner's bracket. <laughs> I wanna say the safe money is on Daigo because he won two years in a row. So I'll, I'll go with the safe bet. Unfortunately, Daigo fell just short of taking his third straight title, finishing in fourth place. And while the rest of the world did their best to compete, a newcomer from Japan stepped up to claim the World Street Fighter IV Championship. With half of the top eight being from Japan, it's not hard to see the product of the arcades and their culture. This isn't just about gaming anymore. It's a way of life, and for some, a career. The evolution of arcade gaming, from the inception of Space Invaders through to fighting and rhythm games, has maintained one constant throughout. It is a cultural beacon that forms the foundation of social communities and eclectic subcultures. The worldwide impact of arcades and their culture can be seen in many facets of society. And while in some locales this culture has waned, we are seeing a strong, nostalgia-driven push to reignite the passion that Space Invaders first captured. Professional gaming is on the rise, and arcades have asserted themselves beyond that of a simple hobby. The feelings and emotions that exist within arcades are unique and should be celebrated. This is the arcade experience.
Sayonara, Toki. Oh, it's been fun, but my credit card is getting refused. My bags are full of games. We bought the JNL game, but I'd like to have one last.